Gracious God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to reveal your love for all people. This day, God, we would pray that you would be with and bless Christopher and Jessica with every good gift, that their life together may show forth your love, and grant that at the last we may all celebrate with Christ the marriage feast that has no end. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. First reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always. Hopes, always persevered. Love never fails. The second reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10. From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one the word of God for the people. That reading from 1 Corinthians is absolutely powerful every time I hear it. And as those words were shared again this day, those qualities of the gift of love, it's never inward, it's always outward. It's a, it's a, a, a constant, a day in and day out, giving of the gift that's shown in kindness and in patience and in love and in forgiveness and in, in a sense, a commitment and in that forbearing one for the other and with the other, always seeking out the other person. What a gift of love that is. But the gift that you are receiving this day in your marriage and in the promise of your life together is really only a reflection of another gift. And that is the gift of Jesus Christ. The greatest gift ever given, to be sure. The gift that reminds us that God is indeed not only a God of love, but that God is love. God is the very essence and the very character of love. And he shares that with us. He shares that with you so that the two of you then can be loved one for the other. But those aren't the only gifts that you have this day. You have the gift of groups of people surrounding you. You're not in this all by yourself, and that is a good thing. Just to be supported and encouraged and, and prayed for and, and, uh, and, and just affirmed in your life together, that too is a gift. And even even some of the struggles that you, were, that you will encounter in your life together can indeed be counted as gifts. Because those, those struggle times have the wonderful potential of bringing the two of you closer together. Struggles don't take us apart, struggles bring us together. And in those struggles we really find out what it means to exercise the qualities and the characters of love. And in those struggles and in those difficulties, we truly determine just what is important to us, what motivates us, what gets our juices flowing, what are our passions. And that too is a gift. So all of these gifts that you're celebrating this day, we give thanks to God for giving those gifts. And we pray that those gifts will be with you, Support you, will guide you, will lead you, will be your treasure chest in your life together. The gift has already been given. The Lord God in his goodness created us male and female, and by the gift of marriage founded human community in a joy which begins now and is brought to perfection in the life to come. Because of sin, which is our age-old rebellion, the badness of marriage can't be overcast. The gift of a family can become a burden. 
but because God who established marriage continues to, still to bless it with his abundant and ever-present support, we can be sustained in our weariness and have our joys restored. Christopher and Jessica, if it is your intention to share with each other the joys and the sorrows and all that the years will bring, with your promises, bind yourself to each other as husband and as wife. I take you, Jessica, to be my wife. I take you, Jessica, to be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. And in all things. And in all things. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. To love you. To love you. And to cherish you. To cherish you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I take you, Christopher, to be my husband. I take you, Christopher, to be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. And in all things. And in all things. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. To love you. To love you. And to cherish you. To cherish you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. These wedding rings placed on my Bible this day do a couple things for us. They're an outward sign and a reminder of, of a love that is given to us by God and then that the two of you have shared with each other this day. But they're also an inward sign and an inward reminder of the love and the essence of love that the two of you commit yourself uh, to this day in your journey in life together. That journey will be marked with wonder and with surprises the laughter and with tears, with celebration, and with the mix of disappointment, but always with a sense of hope and joy. Let us pray. Bless, O oh Lord, the giving of these rings, that they may be worn in love and faithfulness to each other and in favor with you all the days of their lives. Amen. This ring is a sign of my love and faith. This ring is a sign of my love and faithfulness. This ring is a sign of my love and faithfulness. This ring is a sign of my love and faithfulness. Christopher and Jessica, by your promises before God in the presence of these people, you have joined yourself together. I now pronounce you husband and wife, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord God who created our first parents and established them in marriage, establish and sustain you, that you may find delight in each other and grow in holy love until your life's end. May you dwell in God's presence forever, and may his true and constant love preserve you all grace. Let us pray. As we gather together this day, Almighty God, we pray that you would bless Christopher and Jessica with that gift of love and with that gift of life that they have found with each other and pray that you continue to be with them as they live out their life of love and faithfulness to each other and to you. We would pray, God, that you would pour down your grace upon these two this day, that they may fulfill the vows that they have spoken, support them in their life together and from your great storehouse of gifts, provide them with power and patience, affection, understanding, forgiveness, and with love. We don't only pray for the two of these, but we also pray, God, for all of your people, husbands and wives, parents and children, that living together and working together, we may be your servants here until that day when we will be joined together with you at that great marriage feast that indeed will have no end. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And now may Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit keep you in his light and truth and love now and forever. It is my honor this day to be able to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Christopher McDonald. 